Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Intel NUC 13 Pro. Now, I gotta say, for the form factor, this thing is putting out some amazing performance. And this is their original NUC line, the 4x4 line. This is what Intel was known for when you talked about NUCs. Recently, they've released some larger ones that uh, do support dedicated GPUs and are putting out some amazing performance. But personally, when it comes down to it, these are my favorite that they've released, given how small they are. So there's two different form factors that you can pick up. You've got the short version, which we have here. It's going to be the smaller of the two. Or you can go with the tall version, which will support a 2.5-inch drive in the bottom of the unit. Now, that's really the only difference between the two. There's no extra cooling going on with the taller one or anything like that. So you're going to get the same kind of performance. You'll just have an extra drive option. But these new NUCs do support two NVMe SSDs, so we've got two slots in here for extra storage off the bat. And as you can see, this thing is super tiny. The new NUC 13 Pro does come with a 120 watt power supply just to provide a little extra for this uh, 13th gen CPU. And with this, we actually got 12 cores, 14 threads with a clock up to 5 gigahertz on the performance cores, and it will get there. When it comes to I.O. on this new model, up front here we get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Not much going on around the sides, we do have some ventilation, but moving around back we get our power input, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, one USB 2.0 port, we also get another full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, two full-function 40 gig Thunderbolt 4 ports, and two full-size HDMI 2.0B ports, so we can actually do four displays out of this mini PC here. And keep in mind, since this is full function 40 gig Thunderbolt 4, we can connect an eGPU and we will be testing it by the end of the video, so stay tuned. Just like all of Intel's 4x4 NUCs, they will be offering a few different variants, but the one we're taking a look at in this video has the new Intel i7-13600P. 12 cores, 14 threads, we've got 4 performance cores up to 5 GHz and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.7. Built-in Intel Xe iGPU with 96 execution units at 1500 MHz. This is still using SODIMM DDR4. I was really hoping they were going to upgrade this one to DDR5, but I guess the next revision may use DDR5 off the bat. But this will support up to 64 gigabytes SODIMM DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz. Inside, we've got one M.2 2280 PCIe X4 Gen 4 NVMe slot. And even with the shorter version here, we can add another M.2, but it's going to be a 2240 PCIe X1 Gen 3. It'll be a bit slower, but luckily we do have extra storage with the smaller unit here. Remember, they make the taller one, which will fit a 2.5 inch drive. We also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3, and for this video, I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro. Getting in here is super easy. There's only four screws on the bottom, and with my setup here, I've got a 512 M.2 SSD and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. So I've had this in my possession for the last week and a half, and I've been messing around with it quite a bit. It's just kind of been my go-to little everyday desktop for now. And overall, very snappy little system. I'm actually a big fan of this chip. From the BIOS, out of the box, TDP on the 1360p is set at 45 watts with a boost up to 60. You can change this from the BIOS if you want to, but I would recommend changing the fan curve if you do that. Right now, we're sitting at the stock TDP because it does boost up enough to get us those high clocks on the CPU and GPU when we need them. So using this as an everyday desktop for most people is going to work out just fine. Web browsing, email checking, document editing, you can even get some photo editing and video editing out of the way on it just like it sits. But remember, we've got Thunderbolt 4 here, so we can turn this into a gaming machine. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of 4K video playback. And you know, I've been reviewing these NUX for quite a while now, even since 8 gen and even from then on 4k video playback on these chips has been phenomenal you want to stream from youtube 4k 60 it'll even handle hdr that's what we got going here zero drop frames and we are on wi-fi remember this does have wi-fi 6 built in and if you just wanted to stream from your favorite app like netflix or even internal or external drives you're not going to have an issue with 4k on this unit Next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks, and the first one we have here is Geekbench 4. Remember, we're only at 45 watts with a 65 watt boost on the TDP. We could get a bit more out of this, but it's looking really good. Coming in with a single core of 2454 and a multi of 10,682. Given it's such a small form factor unit and we're working with a mobile chip, these are some great scores here, especially on that single core. 
but as we know, these Intel XE graphics can leave a little more to be desired. Now, it would have been nice if they added DDR5. It definitely would have helped out because we're using that system RAM as VRAM. But with 3 Mark Night Raid, 19,177, and I also tested Time Spy, we got a 1,944. So it's fallen far behind the RDNA 2 iGPUs that we're seeing coming out of AMD right now, like with the 6800U. But I gotta say, this CPU performance is really great. We can still get some gaming done, and I did want to test some out real quick. And first up, we've got GTA 5 1080p normal settings. We're getting an average of around 68 FPS. So this is really playable at 1080p, and if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that our GPU clock is right there at 1500 MHz, and we're only pulling around 32 watts in total package power from this CPU. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now with this, I'm only getting an average of around 41 FPS, but we are at 900p low settings, and the IGTI built-in screen scaling for this game is set to balanced. I didn't even mess around with XESS screen scaling. Personally, I just haven't had really good luck with it when it comes to these integrated GPUs. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings, we can get an average of around 48 FPS. It's actually much higher than I thought it would be, given, you know, how hard this game is to run. Really surprised to see it running this well. We could go ahead and lock all of these down at, you know, 45 FPS and have a pretty decent time with it, but it would be nice to get a little more GPU performance out of this mini PC, and we definitely can, but it's not going to be internally. We do have to use an eGPU. Now we've got full Thunderbolt 4 support. You know, when it comes to Thunderbolt 4 versus USB 4, personally, I've done a lot of testing. With handhelds and mini PCs, I always get way better performance when it's real Thunderbolt 4 for some odd reason. So what I've got here is the Razer Core X eGPU dock with an RTX 3080 Ti, definitely overkill, but this is what I had set up right now. All I need to do is plug in that one Thunderbolt 4 cable to the back of this mini PC. You can see my GPU spun up. It's going to detect everything, and I've got HDMI going from the graphics card to the monitor. We don't want to run through the HDMI on the mini PC, that way we can get the maximum performance, and we're still going to be limited with this because we're not running at the correct bandwidth. We're still over Thunderbolt 4, but it's definitely going to open up the GPU performance on this thing. And just to give you an idea, I ran Firestrike on the built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics, 5,239. But when we have this RTX 3080 Ti connected over Thunderbolt 4, our score jumps up to 26,317. I mean, definitely a dramatic jump, and I expected that given that we have an RTX 3080 Ti connected to this PC. And of course, I wanted to show off some real gameplay with this external GPU. So uh, here's Cyberpunk 2077, and if you remember, we were running this at 720p low on the internal graphics, and we were netting around 47 FPS on average. Now we're at 1440p, high settings, and we can get an average of around 82 FPS with this game. And of course, the 3080 Ti is overkill. Usually I suggest using something like an RTX 3060. The final thing I wanted to take a look at here was total system power consumption. This is a big concern to a lot of people, so while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. It'll tell me exactly how much this is pulling from the wall. At idle, 9 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 42, and while doing an extreme stress test that maxes out all 12 cores, 14 threads, and the built-in iGPU, 73 watts. When we adjust the TDP, we can get on up from here, but this is kind of stock right out of the box, which isn't bad at all. Another thing I wanted to take a look at were just overall average CPU temps. When it comes to these small form factor PCs, they can get quite hot, but whatever they're doing here, it's actually working pretty well. At idle, 39 degrees Celsius, average gaming, 79 degrees Celsius, and this can hit thermal throttle in the right conditions. So about six and a half minutes into Cinebench R23, this will hit 95 degrees Celsius and then start underclocking that CPU. But under everyday normal use, I didn't have to worry about thermal throttling. And from the BIOS, we've actually got a fan curve that we can manually adjust or we can use one of their presets. We've got quiet, which obviously is going to keep it nice and quiet, but it will get a bit hotter. Cool is going to make it a bit louder, but uh, stay nice and chilly. And balanced is kind of right there in the middle. That's exactly what I have it set up with. So overall, I'm really liking the new Nook 13 Pro. This CPU is performing really well for its form factor. Definitely leaves some uh, iGPU performance to be desired for sure, but we do have Thunderbolt 4 here, which works great with external GPUs. 
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave some links in the description. I've got at least one more planned here. I would love to run Linux on this and see what kind of performance we can get out of, let's say, an Arch build, maybe Manjaro or something similar. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And like always, thanks for watching.